Hey guys, Josh here, and I've got Jack in Chicago, Illinois, and he's finished the program, just been hired. He's going to start next week. Uh, Jack, you know the drill. Go ahead and just tell everyone a little bit about yourself prior to like doing our program. Yep. So I graduated um, from school about two years, two and a half years ago. Um, I studied all, I studied computer science and informatics. Um, so when I got out of school, um, I joined a uh, company where I was doing system configuration. Um, so pretty much zero, you know, zero sales interaction, very little client interaction, pretty much mainly just, um, you know, interacting with our back end software system um, and sitting behind a computer all day, not really talking to anybody. So unless, unless they, I'm sure they called you or emailed you with like problems. They're like, hey, can, how do I fix this? Or That's the thing. You're always debugging. You're always uh, solving other people's tech problems. Um, so. So I, I kind of figured that I didn't really want to go down that route. Um, I, I didn't want to be stuck in just the developer um, career path for, you know, however long I was going to be working. And so I figured I still wanted to work at a tech company. I still wanted to be learning about technology because I liked learning about tech, but I just didn't want to necessarily be doing development. Mm -hmm. So I decided that's why I decided to go down the software sales route so that I could still get involved with a great tech company, but and still learn, you know, really valuable tech but still have that human interaction and still kind of be in charge of my own future and my own success based on how, how well I perform in a sales career. Um, so I had zero sales experience before I, um, you know, before I joined this program and I was still able to get hired. So, so okay, this is super interesting. Why did you even consider like getting into sales and then like more than that software sales, like you're, you're at it, the, the top, of the sales pro world you just went straight for that what what put that idea in your head what, what got you thinking on that path well I, I i knew i wanted to stay in software i knew i wanted to stay in tech and i wanted to learn about tech i enjoy learning about it um it's just necessarily what your day-to-day -day, uh life looks like if you go down that development route um you know i wanted a career where my performance was going to be in direct correlation with how well I did financially. And I felt like by combining my ability to communicate with people and also learning that tech, I felt like that would be the best utilization of my skills in order to maximize that earning potential. So that was the main reason why I decided to go down software sales. All right, so you knew that you wanted to do it and um, you, you wanted to change. You found pre-hired, you thought, all right, uh, well actually, no, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't wanna speak for you. What, would you. what did you think when you found us, what we were doing? Um, so I, when I, when I, I originally found pre-hired on a Facebook ad, um, I think I probably had a lot of the emotions that a, a normal person would have when they see a, an ad like that, which is skepticism. Um, you know, the idea of being able to get in a six figure, um, software sales career obviously sounds almost too good to be true. But then, um, you know, I, I went and researched the website and I just figured, you know, I'll take the, I'll, I'll do the intro call. I'll see what this program's all about. I'll learn a bit. I'll learn a little bit more about it, and you know, kind of hear them out, hear their side of the story. And you know what? I'm I'm so glad I did, because I there's no way that I would have gotten to where I'm at right now nearly as quickly, and you know, nearly with the knowledge that I have if I hadn't if I hadn't decided to join the program. <laughs> well, man, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, and you know, actually, I, I want to say this is like so. Uh, when you got on the call, like yeah, when you when you were like, okay, this is enough for me to like get on a call with these guys and find out more. I'm just curious, like what, what were your expectations for that call? Like, did you have like any negative? Cause you know, the sales, I feel like the sales industry as a whole has gotten a really bad rap since yeah. like the nineties, uh, like where, and even the starting in the eighties, like, and then the movies like the Wolf of Wall Street, like right. Leo DiCaprio playing these parts. Like, I feel like people think we're going to like force them into like this high pressure conversation. That's like, you got to buy this. Like, you, you know, like I, I don't even know what's going through these people's minds. Right. Um, but I'm curious for you specifically, did you have any of that negative like nuance or mindset like towards like what the experience might be talking with someone on our team uh, or was it positive or was it kind of neutral expectations? I'm just curious. What, what were you thinking going into that first? Yeah. Call? Go, going into that first call, I think I had a lot of the expectations that you just outlined. You know, I was very skeptical. Um, I was expecting, I was half expecting to be in a super high pressure situation and try to be forced to commit to something that I wasn't ready to commit to. Um, and it, it really wasn't like that at all. Um, I think one thing that you mentioned in your program um, that really resonated with me and it really, I think, reflects on how your sales team um, conducted that first meeting was, 
you know, they're just trying to find if there's any sort of mutual fit between us to see if, if, the, if the solution that you're providing is a potential fit for what I'm looking for. And it was, that was really what the whole call consisted of. It was seeing is if there is there a mutual fit, mutual fit between us. Um, and so, you know, I had, um, you know, I had as much time as I needed to make the decision and as pretty much as, you know, all the information that I could ask for um, when I decided to go down this or to when I was deciding whether or not I wanted to go down this program. So it was um, it was really more cons like a consultative call versus a sales call. So that's that's uh, that's what we like to do is is the AB like and you know this because it's in the program that you know ABCs of selling always be closing is a complete BS. Yeah, it it's ridiculous mindset. Nobody uh, likes to be talked to like that. <laughs> I know. And like, and then you get some sales, like, so you didn't have a sales background coming into the program. So I love like the fact that there's no bad habits that have yeah. to be redone or relearned. Whereas we do sometimes get more of an old school mindset of this high pressure, high energy salesperson sometimes mm -hmm. that we talk to. And we're going to be like, then they start off talking to us with that very like high pressure, like combative almost attitude in a call. And um, we actually have to address it. Sometimes. It's kind of funny because right. they're like, you know, so tell me, you know, what is this you're doing? What's your pitch? I'm like, whoa, whoa. it's like, hold on. It's like, I can tell you've been in sales a while. And right. I can also tell <laughs> you've done some things, probably there's bad habits that you're bringing into this whole relationship. And that's all it is, is a relationship right. that's hopefully starting off well. But um, there's like a lot of intensity. And sometimes if, if I'm ever on a call with someone, I'll be like, whoa, dude, there's a lot of intensity coming from you. And, mm -hmm. and I just want to help you. So like, and then because they've actually quoted things like ABCs of selling or I could sell ice to an Eskimo. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not good, dude. Like, yeah. you just basically told me you're willing to stoop to a really low level to sell stuff. Like, people, you look, like, if people don't need stuff, I'll sell it anyway. Like, that's right. really bad. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> we're not like that. Um, no, you don't want to be doing that. And that's why I almost think like it's better if you don't have sales experience, it's better to get in a program like this mm -hmm. than to maybe end up at a bad company and learn bad habits. Like maybe they're not teaching you the right sales habits and you do pick up stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, I almost feel like it's better to get in, you know, from a ground level with people that have had success and know what they're talking about. Um, as opposed to, you know, taking some job just to get, just to get sales experience. Now, um, and, and now, and, and obviously it worked for you. I mean, you had no experience. You went into the program, you completed it very quickly. Like, uh, what was, um, uh, when you went through the program and you actually started your sales system. So getting, getting to like the process to getting hired, what was that process like for you? You completed our program. Uh, it doesn't take very long to do that, but it's normally 40, 50 hours. Um, kind of, but a lot of people do it at their own pace. Some do it full time. Most of them do it part time. But when you were done, uh, you used this our science based sales system. And uh, what was that like up until getting these, that job offer that you accepted? Yeah. So um, as I mentioned earlier, I did want to stay in the tech space. So finding a good fit for me was really important. So I did rush through the program, but I wasn't necessarily rushing to get hired. Mm -hmm. I was rushed. You know, I was making sure that I was finding the right fit. But the good thing is about this program is that I was able, you know, before I did this and I would apply to places, a lot of times I wouldn't hear back from people. But when I would go through the process of what you teach in this program, I would pretty much get an interview at almost every place that I applied to. So I was able to, I mean, so I was able to be more selective about the companies that I was looking for. And I was able to pick and choose what I felt like was actually the right fit for me versus just trying to get as many interviews and, you know, see who actually reached out to me. So, um, so that was what my process was like. So I, I mean, when I was reaching out, I had no problems getting interviews. Uh, I was able to find the right company for me and then, you know, eventually work my way up to getting, to getting the actual offer. Yeah. And, and Jack, um, I, I was actually, uh, I don't even know if you know this, but in the two, in the, for the 2019 updates, I did a major update in the course. Um, mm -hmm. I actually filmed a new video uh, and your one of your sequences are actually in the video. I don't even. You no kidding. Know no. Yeah, did you, did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. That's awesome, though. <laughs> yeah. So you're actually, and it shows, and I'm looking at it right now. But I'm not gonna. It has a little bit of. Uh, I'm not gonna show the screen screenshot because it has a lot of members' uh, data there, and it's got their emails and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna mm -hmm. show the screen share. But I'm looking at it, and yeah, I'm one of your sequences for Chicago 
um, you uh, had 10 people that was a really finely curated list of companies. You only put 10 people in there. You had, I'm looking at it now, a 100% response rate and yeah. an 88% uh, booking rate. So yeah. you literally had, like you just said, nine out of 10 companies uh, that you contacted wanted to meet with you for an interview. And I just wanted to say that, uh, first of all, for anyone listening to this, I got to talk to the people listening now. Uh, that's not normal. Jack is actually in the top percentage of, uh, of, of our, of our members in our program. And, um, and, and you know what, and, and to put just some thought into that, Jack obviously did a good job because I was looking at his, uh, his sales system he put together very, he paid attention to detail, very thorough. And then also he just chose well, he made sure to do research on the companies properly. So, uh, but, um, if he was to maybe broaden his scope, like for example, he didn't need to, obviously you get nine out of 10, you don't need to. But if, uh, let's say he had a wider net to cast and he decided, I'm going to make a list of 50 companies that I'm really excited to work for. Um, and then he wanted to maybe move a little bit faster, then maybe uh, his response rate would have been around 50%. So our member average, if you didn't know this, Jack, is right around 50% uh, booking rate. So uh, 40, yeah, no, I'm sorry, 50% on average response rates. Because some people who try to move really fast and they don't pay attention to the sales system, they get like 30, 40% response rates, which are still really, really good. That's one out of, one of every three or four, one of every three companies is contacting them back. And then um, on the high end, uh, right around where you're at, like 80% is normally the high end, but you set a new high where literally 100% of people responded back to you, which yeah. was awesome. And then uh, right around um, like 50% uh, average um, booking rate from that point on. So half the people that get back to you are going to ask for interviews. So we get, yeah, really. So all in all, though, uh, we're, we're just running some new numbers too, which is really interesting. Uh, right around one out of every four, one out of every five companies that you actually reach out to end up making offers if you continue down the interview process. Like that's what we're finding right now. So I just had to share those numbers because I'm sharing yours, which are above average results. And I always mm -hmm. like to tell everyone what average is. So Jack has set the bar right now uh, going into like in 2019, Jack has the bar set 100% uh, <laughs> response rates, 88% booking rates. <laughs> so I had to say that. So um, man, tell us about the company you ended up deciding uh, you accept the offer from. Mm -hmm. So they do uh, mobile application security. So they have they have a product that basically helps any software development company or really any company in general um, that's building a mobile app. It helps them find security flaws or possible uh, possible vulnerabilities in their code. Um, so what really excited me about that is um, first of all, it's it's a super fast growing company. Um, they're projected to uh, you know, grow their staff this year by I think about 50%. Um, and also it's, it's in a technical space, so mobile application security. Um, you know, I still, as I mentioned before, I love learning about technology. Um, so that's going to be, I mean, I, I don't think mobile apps are going anywhere anytime soon. So that's going to be um, you know, a super cutting edge and super growing field. And the, uh, the company's name is what again? Now Secure. In Chicago, awesome. And you're, yeah, the so, role is, what's the I'll title of the role? Yep, I'll be in SDR in their Chicago office. Great. So, um, and you start, uh, what, no, you've got like a big boot camp or kickoff uh, next week, and then, then you get started right after that? That's right, yep. So, I'll, my first day is actually going to be at their kickoff conference in New Orleans. So, that'll be next week. Um, and then my first day on the actual job will be in the Chicago office when we get back the week after. All right. And then, um, obviously, uh, I've already uh, mentioned your results and like how you were able to just pretty much get a, a massive amount of response. And then you chose the one that you're really excited about working with. You start next week. So there's some other people that are watching this video. They've been watching us maybe a long time on our email list for, for over a year or so. Uh, what would you say to someone who's on the fence about just what we're doing, maybe software sales as a career or just even working with us to do that, what, what advice would you give to someone that maybe is, was in your shoes several months back? Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say just go for it. I mean, if you, um, if you commit to it, then, um, you know, there's really, there's, there's not, there's a whole lot that you can miss out on by sitting and thinking and being on the fence for a while. But you know, if you, if you commit and you make the move, then, you know, at least you'll know whether or not it's the right path for you. Um, and you're getting, you're getting some really top notch sales training from, from this program. Um, you'll be, you'll be able to get a really good grasp of what the whole career in software sales will be like just by going through this program. 
So, I mean, I would say if you're on the fence, um, you know, just try it, just try it. And, uh, you'll, uh, you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll at least have clarity, um, in that sense. So that was kind of what my position was. You know, I was on the fence for a while. I didn't know that was a route I wanted to go down, but this opportunity presented itself in front of me. And, um, you know, I figured, you know, this program, it's a big commitment, but at least I'll have clarity of what I want to do in my career. So what, you know, whether or not software sales was the path for me or not, I at least would have direction and moving, you know, direction moving forward. Um, so that was why I decided to do it. And that would be my advice to anybody else who's on the fence. Jack, thanks for sharing your story and uh, good luck in, on your new job that you're starting next week with NowSecure. Cool. Thanks, Josh.